This is just badass. Hello there girls and boys and welcome back to the channel. SSL just released a new update to the entire SSL 360 environment which is comprised of several devices such as the UF8, UC1 and UF1 which are extremely powerful control surfaces that allows you to control your digital audio workstation and also the SSL plugins created by themselves. But this time around they also released the newly developed SSL Link plugin that allows you to load a plugin inside of the SSL Link and thus allowing you to control that plugin with your hands through the use of the UC1 controller. And the best part, you can map the parameters of the plugins yourself. So welcome back girls and boys to Logic Prex. In front of us we've got the product that we're gonna use to show you the new additions to SL360 and of course the SL360 Link. So first and foremost, let's give it a listen. Here we go. Just a very simple drum pattern coming out of Drummer. And if you're eagle light as has know that you are, we're dealing with a multi-output uh, iteration of Drummer, which allows me to split the signal of each of the different uh, elements of the drum kit into different and independent tracks. And as you can tell as well, I have inserted a different SSL360 enabled plugin into each and every single one of my channel strips, including, believe it or not, a auxiliary track. The reason why I did it is because with SL360 Link, you are now able to control and actually uh, map any of the different parameters of any given plugin to be controlled by the UC1 that you got in front of you right now. More on that later. So for the time being, I'm going to just get rid of this guy and begin showing you the different elements of my mix. The first uh, element that I'm going to show you is the kick drum, which is actually, as you might have guessed, being controlled through the U, uh, UC1 by using the SL360 Link software. But here's the big one. I am not controlling an SSL plugin. This is actually a Universal Audio produced API channel strip. Let me show you. Yes. What you saw, it's actually happening. Now I'm able to control my Universal Audio plugin through the use of the UC1. And the best part, I actually mapped this bad boy myself. And I will show you how to do it later on in this video. And the best thing is that depending on which plugin you're planning to use, Universal Audio has provided already some actual uh, mappings for many popular uh, different options when it, when it comes to uh, channel strips. For example, this, one, this guy is running this, the, the API, but over here I have another one, another iteration controlling my hi-hats, and this is coming in the form of the Brainworks version of the SSL channel strip, to be precise, the 4000G. And you can tell as well that automatically my UC1 is now set to control this bad boy. Look at that. <laughs> That's fantastic. And yes, this is not made by SSL themselves. As you can see, yes, it's Brainworks. Badass! By the way, if you find this kind of content useful or interesting, let us know by clicking the like button under it. Let's continue. So this is very cool, but also it doesn't stop there. Let me show you the SSL 360 environment. What you got in front of you is the SSL 360 environment, and now it allows you to see even the plugins that are not SSL uh, creations. For example, this guy, as I showed you, is the Brainworks, and this guy is the API. And look at this. Even the, the naming conventions of the channel strip is telling you which kind of plugin you have inserted here. And this is a hint for the future. Look at this. This is a little played by Sound Toys. So this is extremely cool. As you might remember, I have inserted an SSL 360 link into my auxiliary track, as you can see right now on your screen. And this thing allows me to control that very track through the use of the SSL 360 environment. Let me show you. Over here, you can actually set the different outputs of all of the, your different uh, channel strips controlling, controlled by the UC UF8 uh, surface and you can control them independently by using the faders over here. And over here we got our plate reverb. I'm going to unmute it right now and I'm going to go back to Logic and you'll see that now we're going to be able to hear the output of the reverb that I have inserted on my 360. But it, it doesn't stop there. 
Now I'm going to show you how I would be able to control the output of that very plugin by the use or through the use of my fader encoder over here. I'm going to lower it all the way down. Isn't it amazing? This opens up a plethora of different options. And this is right now being showcased to you through the use of Logic, which is not necessarily speaking the most, the, the DAW that is taking the most advantage out of this environment. Luna, for example, by uh, Universal Audio, it's very good at taking advantage of this because it's a much more modern uh, take on the whole uh, uh, control surfaces game. The only thing is that as, at this very moment, I haven't been able to make the most out of the Loon environment because there is a tiny bug that I'm trying to squash. And it's related to the way that Luna is seeing the different instances of the plugin itself. But being the guy I am, I already sent a happily written email uh, letting them know that there is an issue with the software. Hopefully it's going to be ironed out later on. Hey, this is Adam from the future. And while editing the video, I got this email from SSL telling me that the issue that I reported is related to the compatibility of Luna with that particular new format of BST3. And it seems that as soon as Luna releases a new update, this is going to work like a charm. But for the time being, it's excellent and I have proven it to work on a, a different audio workstations such as uh, Logic, of course, Harrison Mixbus, and Bitwig Studio, and including Machine by Native Instruments. So you, I can tell you that it's super rock solid at this stage, but Luna is the only one that has that issue. And of course, I saved the best for last. Now I'm going to show you how to map the parameters of any given plugin to the UC1 using 360 link. Here we go. First, of course, we're going to open up the instance of 360 link, and you can tell that I already have this guy turned on. This is showing us the parameters of the plugin that have access or that 360 has access to that could be controlled by the controller itself. So there are two ways to do it. You can either click on the parameter you want to affect and then go straight to the point on the, the encoder you want to use uh, to control the, the mix in this case. I'm going to select the input. Now let me, let me show you what is going to happen. If we click over here, as I did before, it's going to now show, show us the interface of the plugin. And According to the plan, look at this. Now I'm able to control the plugin itself through the use of my control surface. That's super cool. Now let me finish it off and let's have fun with it. I'm going to put this guy over here so we can actually have both in screen, on the screen. So here we go. I'm going to apply the low cut and of course I'm going to use the uh, high pass filter because that makes sense, of course. Look at this. Excellent. It's working. But now let me show you. Or what if I tell you, you can actually tell which of the different parameters uh, to be controlled by simply just touching any of the different sections of your uh, uh, device, the UC1. I'm going to use the release tail over here of my compressor, and I want that to control the decay, because that kind of makes sense. Excellent. And just as a final tick, let's apply the mod enable to the fast attack button. So according to this, it should be working now. Let's play around with this plugin as it is. I'm going to press play and we're going to begin uh, messing around with the plugin itself. Here we go. Isn't it amazing? And you saw how easy it is for you to map those parameters. The thing is that you can actually come up with really clever uh, ways to control different plugins. As I showed you before, I already mapped out my own uh, interpretation of the channel strip by API. And I gotta tell you, now I see myself using that plugin way more often than before. So there you have it, girls and boys. What do you think about this? This is excellent. I think that SSL is actually knocking the ball out of the park with the whole concept, with this whole environment. And it's a great addition to any of you who happen to be uh, thinking of going serious about mixing music, professionally speaking. Uh, and again, this is uh, the, a control surface is not something that is going to make you a better mixer, but it's going to improve your workflow quite dramatically. And it's going to make you work faster. And in the end, when you're doing this professionally, the faster you can get the job done, the better. So it's something that you should consider later on in your career. 
Do you need it as a, as something to start off with? No, that would be a terrible idea because these these toys are not cheap, and you can basically get away with most of what this does, this guy does with your mouse that you should already own. So that's my take on it. Now, Russell boys, if you got any more questions regarding the SL 360 environment, or if you want to know more or learn more about mixing music or producing music for that matter. Stick around to this channel because this is what we do over here. And of course, if you want to support this kind of content, the best way to do it is not just by subscribing, but also by listening to music on Apple Music or Spotify, and also by following us on social media, such as Instagram, because that's the best way for you to get in touch with us in a much more personal basis. Now, we're some boys, as every single time that I meet you, I gotta remind you something. Never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what to dream about. And remember that I will see you when I see you.